Hi, I'm Graham Glynn, Executive Director and Assistant Provost for Teaching Learning Plus Technology at Stony Brook University, and this is Innovations in Education. In our show we feature faculty and staff using innovative approaches and best practices for teaching and applications of educational technology that have a positive effect on student learning. In today's show I'm joined by Dr. Joseph Lohr, who's a professor in the chemistry department. Welcome Joe. Thanks Graham. Joe, tell us a little bit about the subject you teach and the setting in which you teach it. Well, for the last several years I've been teaching uh, our basic organic chemistry course. This is a large course. We have uh, 1,050 students in the fall. In the spring, we're, we're down to two, uh, one 540 group, another 280 group. But the 540 size, of course, means we're in Javits 100, mm -hmm. uh, the largest room on campus for, for lectures. So. Okay. so up until about 2002, you were using the traditional Sage on the Stage lecture format for this class. Yeah, we were, we were up there behind the uh, podium. And uh, you know, originally, of course, we were showing uh, overhead transparencies and then we moved into the modern era with PowerPoint but <laughs> it was we were still doing overhead transparencies in the in the beginning but you know the format on the PowerPoint but we we obviously we were doing that and and I think perhaps that as the technology arrived we started putting more into the lectures and we are seeing of course the students are paying attention less and less okay and uh, so uh, we knew it was time to do something different. So it was that drop in attention that made you dissatisfied with that approach? And uh, yeah, it was, it was, attendance was very poor. Uh, we also, uh, some of this rolls into general chemistry as well. Tendency was, attendance was very poor. Uh, and uh, when we, you know, talked to students and things like that, this, the message was, well, there was very little reason to come to lecture because, well, they said, oh, we can read it in the book just as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, we were thought our lectures were brilliant, and we couldn't understand why they didn't see the brilliance in them. But the main thing was we could say what well, the students were simply coming to the lecture to sit. Okay. And uh, students uh, were not taking notes. They were just sitting. Uh, they were reading the newspaper. They were talking to their friends. Um, they weren't paying a whole lot of attention. And today, of course, they'd be browsing the internet on their laptops. That's and, right. That's and right. Making noise and, and right. other things. So, so how did you change your approach? Okay. Well, the, the first there's a couple of things we started uh, at the beginning. Uh, first of us, we started giving quizzes in class. This was pre-clicker era now. So, because it's just half years, you know, half a dozen years ago is a long time ago. Yes. Uh, uh, we were we started by giving written cl click uh, written, written quizzes, which was just one question a day, turn in one piece of paper. Uh, very simple, but mainly just to get them to do something. And one of the things we did when we, we started giving the written quizzes, which was turned out to be very important, is we left the stage. Hmm. Is, and we had a remote, we had, of course, the, the wireless mic, and we all had a remote mouse to run the PowerPoint. And so we went to the floor to help them with the written quizzes. And we discovered that going to the floor was a much bigger addition to the course than the written quizzes. Because now you basically, we're down on the floor where the students can see you one-on-one, -on -one, and you could oh, look over their shoulder, see what they're doing. And the interesting thing is you look over one student's shoulder and see what he or she is doing, chances are it's representative of the whole. Okay. And you can start giving that one student feedback, and even the students in the balcony who are, who, who are doing something entirely else think that you're addressing them because they're having the same problems. And, and did you go like all the way to the back of the lecture hall? or? You oh, we do. We certainly do. We certainly do. Yeah, okay. yeah. We, we did that. I mean, the, the uh, uh, it was with remote mouse only. We were doing a lot of jumping back and forth. Okay. Um, and uh, so that didn't work out very well. And then uh, a few years ago, right, losing track of time, this, the, the clickers arrived, of course, but also the, uh, the, the remote tablet, the airliner, which allows one to to you know, write as a full mouse up on the screen okay. uh, arrived. Now with those two technologies. So, so before you go further, mm -hmm. explain what a clicker is. Oh, the clickers. Okay, this is this is the personal response system, uh, where the students uh, basically have a have a remote control like they would for a television, where they allow to put in uh, simple input. Uh, everyone uh, has their own remote control, and uh, and uh, so uh, so this gives a response to the students. So. Um, 
so using the, using the click using the clickers now every student is part of the process. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really is. Um, and so we're on the floor. We have this remote tablet which allows us to write on the screen and can do complete control of the PowerPoint, complete control of the of the software which drives the clickers. And you're integrating the clicker answers into the PowerPoint also. Oh yes, absolutely. And uh, and the key thing is that uh, at the beginning we were doing clicker questions. They weren't very they weren't very useful uh, because what we were doing we were, we were kind of taking standard multiple choice uh, questions f that we from exams right. or some of the publishers put out sample questions. Well, it turns out they're dreadful mm -hmm. uh, for this this environment because the students still don't have to do anything. Uh, so what we've done very much now is try to integrate the clickers into the lecture itself in the sense of carrying th students through various steps. Organic chemistry is very visual. Mm -hmm. uh, students have to draw. And so we try to answer questions where the students can't possibly answer this question in a meaningful way unless they've done something on paper first. Okay. And that works out pretty well. Uh, most of the students participate. And uh, that's individually they think about these answers? Well, no, no. We're encouraging, we're encouraging them to talk to each other. In fact, we, 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 we yell at them if they're not talking to each other. Okay. And the interesting thing is, is that they really are now paying attention. Uh, is the students, the, the room is, 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 is noisy much of the time, but then you put up an interesting problem, it goes absolutely quiet for a few seconds, then they start talking again. Okay. And the interesting thing is what they're talking about is the problem. They're not talking about, you know, what did you do last night? Mm -hmm. They're talking about the problem. And they, I think they really enjoy it is the other thing. I mean, the students are inherently social. Yep. Uh, they like to talk to each other. They like to talk to each other about common problems. And, uh, and they're not worried about exposing their ignorance to each other. No, not be. really. For one thing, we, we, you, we make a point of the, the questions, some of them are hard, right. okay, where, where the majority are going to get them wrong. Mm -hmm. And in fact, one of the best learning experiences, of course, is to give something where everybody messes it. Right. And then you say, wow, have you thought about this? And then they, they, they do think about that, and then they understand it. We do, it, we do the quiz again or we run the question again, or do a similar one, and you know, they do better, and they, they, of course, they get into this, they say, well, maybe I can't actually understand the subject after all. Okay. So, so you have this room with 540 right. students, and you're dividing them up into groups of? Oh, well, well in, in, in the particular setting we have of Javits 100, there's no real logical d dividing, so it's, it's basically self-assembled in terms okay. of they're, they're working with the people they're sitting with. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, some in some cases, this meets a, means a group of two, and sometimes it means a group of 15 because sometimes rows will join together. Okay. And what we see very much, I mean, it's always been true, but it's now very true. Students tend to sit in the same seats. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they're sitting with the same group of people. And uh, that works out very well. And you'll, have, and you'll start to know the groups. And of course, every group will have its kind of its natural spokesperson who's the least shy, as you say, and who will, who will do lots of the talking, will be asking questions. And so we're, well, so when we're doing this, we're roaming the aisles. Uh, we also, of course, the TAs are also in the room. We have, we have a group of TAs that come to every lecture. So I'm roaming the aisles, the TAs are roaming the aisles, mm -hmm. and so, uh, so the students have a question, you know, one of us go over. If they have no questions, we're nagging them. We're, okay. we're going, so okay, where, you know, if we see a student who's not, who's not working in a group, we'll say, where's your paper? If they don't have their paper out, we'll say, well, how do you start? Right. Uh, what's your first step? Uh, we ask them questions. And, and of course, we're saying, when I'm saying this, I'm saying it over the mic. So when I say to a student and give them a hint on how to get started, I'm talking to that one student, but all the students in the room can hear, can hear what I'm doing. Because most likely if one student has a question, 20 students in the room have the same question, oh, but sure. haven't voiced absolutely, it. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and do they come to a group consensus on the answer? Or well, actually, it's funny. Uh, if, you, if, you have, if, you have, if, if you have a question where the best students know the answer, it spreads through the room instantly. <laughs> I mean, it's just uh, because they, the students, after a few lectures, they know who is, is the expert, right? right. Uh, we ha if you have a question which is kind of hard, where maybe the best students are kind of split the decision, then it's, there's this, it's once the room is quieter. <laughs> and uh, there, there could be a real divergence in of opinion. Okay. And of course, sometimes uh, we, we, we have you know, good arguments. We'll say, okay, who answered A? You defend it. Someone, someone answered A, raise their hand and ask them to defend their, defend their A answer. And for someone else who answered C, which is the second answer, defend C. And of course, D with the correct answer after all. And, uh, and once I've you know, given them, they, they, they think that's great fun I mean, uh -huh. when, 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 when uh, no one gets the answer. And, uh, and uh, they fool the experts. So, so it, it's, a very interactive, uh, it's a very interactive thing.